really have an amazing knockout because <laughs> it was Tyson Fury taking on Deontay Wilder. Yeah. But which camp were you on going into this? Because I, when he was going for Sports Personality of the Year and all the stuff came out about his like homophobic comments, I wasn't the biggest Tyson Fury fan. Um, I always found him a little bit. McGregor was the right side of arrogant, controversial. And for me, Tyson Fury was the wrong side. But he's, he's had his whole historical kind of been at the lowest point, struggled with depression, and then incredible like ill health and fought himself back to fitness and then forced this points draw with Deontay Wilder so much to unpack there first of all do you think he was robbed because that's what a lot of people have been saying I think he definitely was I mean right. people look at the takedown in the in the uh, the 12th round yeah and the fact that he managed to get back up from that and then I think from that point edge the fight other than obviously the knockdown yeah, yeah yeah just says it all and just the mental strength to come back from that back from everything that he's, he's exactly. fought in the past exactly. it's just Huge props to him. Um, you, you, really you ever watched that. like uh, WWE when you were younger? The rest of no, the, I was never into that. Everyone like, else was, but not me. Was I? Like, only my friends were because it was a nineties thing. Yeah, but uh, it's like the Undertaker. He, he he goes back down and then just just he resurrects, comes up, from resurrects nothing. himself. It's like kind of a, a vampire sitting up in a casket. I thought, is that a bit of showmanship from Fury? Do you think? Because it seems it was all too easy for him to get back up after it. I mean, you have a fight tell how hard he got hit, but you look at the back of the replay. Not only the force of the shot, but the way yeah. he, he hits his head off the, off the canvas, and you think there's no way he's getting up from that. Mm. Warder was even celebrating as well t- in front of the cameras. Yeah, he I saw that. And then his face when he turned around, he's like, "What? How's it that? Did How's he got seem back very real. How's he done that? It's crazy. I think he's just a very resilient guy. He's got he's got a very thick skull. Yeah, definitely. So, um, but overall, just a, a fantastic fight, and I think he definitely got robbed there. But mm. whether the rematch happens or not, it's. Reminds me I saying. think the rematch will happen. It just it feels to me. I I got kind of into boxing recently. Um, I think it was the May, Mayweather McGregor thing, and then the YouTube boxing that got me into it. Yeah. But the Logan Paul KSI fight we were talking about a few months ago suspiciously ends in a draw with a rematch on the card. I was thinking that. I thought it, mm, it's a nice little. Do you think know. boxing is at risk of becoming that sport? It's like a bit. Earring on the side of like the money that they make from it in betting and advertising is a bigger deal than the actual sporting event. Um, I think it could be, and I think it's a bit of a danger for them that they need to, need to be aware of. I think a lot of people were saying that you look at boxing now, those two events in particular, the KSI Logan Paul yeah, fight, yeah, yeah. which obviously, even though it's not a legitimate fight, um, it, it draws the fight, attention. It's like the, yeah, the most yeah. highest earning, and then um, this draw as well. Sure. Um, people were saying that the scoring does seem yeah, suspect. the scoring seems suspect. a bit suspicious, and you think if those are both ending in draws, when they should be. Many people feel there should be a clear winner. Then, if it carries on, then there's a real threat that yeah. boxing could end up becoming, you know, lesser than a UFC, which is almost replacing boxing in terms yeah. of the oh, yeah. the sport I think and UFC, the followership. UFC still holds a lot of respect, and I think when I got into it at uni, like it's, it's a steep, it's a steep jump to get into that style of fighting. But once you're into it, it's very hard to watch boxing because it seems so tame in comparison. Yeah. And the final, the final sort of talking point is. Anthony Joshua is hovering here in the wings. What's what's a draw D for him? Do you think? And what sort of chance would he stand against both Fury or Wilder, whoever eventually yeah. he ends up fighting? Because it would be one of them. It must be a weird one for him because I think he's probably expecting that his next fight would be of Wilder or, or yeah, Fury. Yeah. So now he has to like, look what? at it and think. Right, does a rematch happen? Do of a Fury or Wilder go straight into a fight with him, or does Yang back? Maybe have another fight and end fight of those two fighters. So. It is a frustrating one because I always yeah. think that the weight in boxing is the thing that gets me. It's like they, yeah, they're definitely. so good at hyping it up. You're so used to like I was counting down the days to Fury Wilder, um, McGregor's fight as well was really hyped, and mm. even Anthony Joshua's before it. Like, uh, but it just seems like they're in now this endless cycle of hyping without actually delivering the product. Especially when you see a draw, it's like, well, what was what was all the point in that then? <laughs> we, do, we don't know anything. It's like Brexit. We're still there. We go. We're still here. Right comparison. Nothing's, nothing's happened. Um, Either way. But I think next year for boxing is going to be a massive one. Um, whether the rematch happens yeah. or if it goes straight into Joshua against either of those two. 2019. If you get both fights, that's ideal, isn't it? You that's know, the one. Everyone's a winner there, so right. hopefully that happens. We shall. Sure-